the state seems to be changing its online report card system to make it seem like test scores aren't so terrible. This segment is brought to you by Eastside Weight Loss Clinic. Sick of fad diets that work for a couple months and then you gain all the weight back? Well, I'm down 37 pounds on the Eastside Weight Loss Clinic program and I've kept that weight off for more than a year. Schedule your free 15-minute consultation today at eastsideweightlossclinic.com. We mentioned there was also a debate in what I think is one of the most important races happening in the state of Washington this cycle, and that is the race for Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction. Chris Rakedahl is the two-term incumbent who's running, um, and frankly, who even a lot of Democrats have acknowledged has not done a good job when it comes to educational outcomes, uh, enrollment is declining, etc. cetera. Uh, but his opponent, David Olson, oh, God forbid you have someone who doesn't want to teach DEI in classes. God forbid you have someone who thinks that maybe we should be preparing more kids to go into the trades than to go to four uni universities. Oh, can't have that. So let's stick with the guy who has put test scores in the toilet and who doesn't care about declining enrollment and wants to cut parents out of their kids' lives. So I digress. But anyway, there was a debate in that. There was one issue that was talked about that might have sounded a little confusing if you weren't familiar with what was going on behind the scenes. So I want to play the clip and then I'm going to explain to you what's happening. Our new annual assessments just came out last week and uh, it shows that uh, we did not improve overall year over year. And if you do a deeper dive into the, to the assessment that just came out, it shows a huge disparity in our students of color, Native Americans, and students with disability. It just came out on the OSPI website. Tellingly on that website, though, in past years, they, they showed students that were meeting grade level. But when the needle's not moving in the right direction, my opponent moves the goalpost. So now those, those, uh, the reporting on the OSPI website now shows students at level two that are meeting foundational, it's just this gobbledygook of words, but he's now rolling it up to make it look like the state is doing a lot better than it really is. So when you get criticized by me, criticized by my former opponent, criticized by, by, criticized by NAEP, the National Assessment of Educational Programs, and the Seattle Times, then something's wrong, you don't move the goalpost, you work to fix it. Our test data has been absolutely misrepresented. A three and a four on our one through four scale means you are achieving college and university admissions readiness. And when you go to that university, go Cougs, go Dogs, go Eagles, go name it, you won't need a below 100 level course. That's what a three and a four means. But a two on that assessment has always meant grade level. And the misinformation is meant to make people afraid, to make them angry and make them frustrated because he wants to sell you on more privatization. I certainly don't uh, use any of my words for fear mongering. I just look at the data that's on our own website and look at the data on the National Assessment of Educational Programs that shows us number 27 in the nation. My opponent says we're number two. And for the last couple of months, I've been saying, where is he pulling the rabbit out of that hallet? Because the, the, the data is not showing that we're number two in the nation, we're number 27. Yeah, you can manipulate the data to do and show anything that you want these days. Uh, one thing I'll just say before I dive into what they're talking about here is we did an hour-long interview with David Olson. We just posted it on Patreon and Locals a couple days ago. I highly recommend it. It's, it has no paywall. We don't put paywalls on our subscriber con or on our uh, candidate interviews. Please go watch the whole thing. It's the best I've heard him. Um, he did a phenomenal job. I don't know how you could be a parent, watch his interview, and vote for Chris Rakedahl. So please go check that out. So here's what's going on. So let's um, go back in time a little bit. Um, as of last week, if you were to go to the state website and the OSPI uh, report card for all, all public schools in the state of Washington, this is what you would have seen. So you would have seen a, a couple different data sets on there. So student enrollment, attendance rates, and then the big one, you would have seen um, um, test scores or proficiency ratings. And it would have said, uh, this is from about a week ago, that only 50.7% were meeting ELA standards, 39% were meeting math standards, and 43% were meeting science standards. And that's pretty easy to understand, right? And it paints a pretty dire picture of our state's education system. So that's what it looked like a week ago. Then quietly, at some point late last week, they changed that. So if you go to that same page now, this is what it's going to look like. It's still going to have those really low figures, but it characterizes it different. It said this is students on track for college level learning without needing remedial classes. 
And then it adds this second subset that it's never had on there before, where the test scores look way higher. It's like, oh, 71% ELA, 63% math, 62% science. And it says those are students showing foundational grade level knowledge and skills or above. So that's interesting. So again, just looking before or after, so one pulled from a week ago, one pulled from this week, uh, and the difference that it shows. So before, it just characterized it as meeting ELA standards, meeting math standards, meeting science standards. And now for those same test scores, I mean, there are a couple points off because it changes over time, right? It says students on track for college level learning without needing remedial classes. So those are two very different sounding things, right? Either you're meeting standards or you're not. So have they updated, changed the metrics? What is it? Or do they just want to bifurcate it in that way? Nicole, can you go back to the new report card? Do they just want to bifurcate it in that way because they want to have a data set showing that shows something that's not failure? And that's what I see there is I'm not saying that they're now changing the metrics or misrepresenting metrics, but they clearly don't want it to continue to show that so few of their students are college ready, which what is the point of high school? It's to get you ready for further education, to get you ready for college or to get you ready for the workforce. So it's showing previously that very few students were meeting standards. And now they wanna say, well, let's just pull out you know, let's 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 split those up. So yeah, only 50% are ELA, but those are for students who are ready for college level learning. So we don't expect that percentage to be high, but the students who are showing foundational grade level knowledge and skills, oh, those are much higher. So this is very clear to me what's going on. It's that test scores haven't been great. Chris Reykdahl's probably sick of during his election having everyone reference the fact that like only half of kids are proficient in ELA and math and science. So they're like, how can we split these apart to give us a higher data, data set so we can have some ammunition to fire back against those claims? Uh, Nicole did send an email to OSPI asking about this change in metrics. And they sent us a lengthy email. I'm only going to read part of it, which I think, <clears throat> excuse me, describes their motivation here uh, because they say, well, we didn't change the metrics. We've always been using these metrics. We just didn't you know, post them on our site, essentially. And, and what I want to say before I read this is going back to Chris Reykdahl, he was saying, well, our data has been misrepresented. It's like, okay, but you're in charge of the data that goes on the website. So if you feel like it was being misrepresented, like, why did you allow it to be misrepresented? I don't, I don't understand. But they uh, said in this response to us, the chief communications officer, across all of the states that make up the Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, we are all seeing a narrative persist that conflates proficiency with being on grade level or even simply knowing how to read or do basic math. These narratives are not accurate, and unfortunately, our prior labels on report card were not helping to correct this misinformation. We aren't going to stop publishing publishing the percentage of students who earned levels three and four. Those, da those data sets also tell us an important story about university level readiness. And we are required to report the data to the U.S. Department of Education. But this is part of a broader effort to get the media, the public, and the policymakers to stop conflating that number with a student being on grade level. So that tells me that it is a direct response to negative news stories about learning and about the quality of education. And they're admitting it, that it is a response to that. And they're responding to it while the current head of our public school system is in what's going to be a very tough race to keep his job. Because remember, he performed very poorly in the primary election. So this is one of those statewide races where David Olson, especially because there's not a, um, a party affiliation next to their name, it's a nonpartisan race, where he really has a chance. And and. I would also point out, Nicole, can you go back to that new report card one again for me? Thank you. I would also point out, even if you're looking at the test scores for students showing foundational grade level, that, like that's like students at the very basic level for their grade, right? Those still aren't great. 62% no, in math? 62% in science? All numbers are not great because no. they're not looking deeper into them. Like I now know how easy it is to graduate even if you're not really meeting these standards right. because they're the testing they're letting them have notes they're doing things that they're letting them have the questions beforehand i mean some of that stuff was probably going on early you know years ago but yeah 
to a different extent now. And then on top of that, the the uh, graduation rate, rate letting oh, yeah. kids graduate, whether they are going to school or not, because that 69 percent that don't even show up for right. most of the year. Oh, sorry. I could, that's I could a, bring that that's a up. good that's a good point, because look at those two data data sets next right. to each other. So 83.6 percent are graduating in four years, yet 69.7 percent are not attending school regularly. Right. So they don't even have to go to school. That and you're is such a good them. point. I have not even because we've heard this over and over from parents that they really there was a there was a phrase for it that they used during the pandemic about lowering standards and mm-hmm. acting like students were still somebody will remind me of the phrase, but lowering standards, you know, not we can't fail kids that show up. How could you fail a kid that shows up or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, so they wouldn't give failing grades. So you know that the actual uh, readiness is far below even these really terrible scores. And then you've got 70 percent of kids who aren't even attending class regularly imagine that missing 10 percent mm-hmm. of classes or more yet you have 84 percent who are graduating in four years oh yeah and i mean i know Great specific point. examples of i i've heard from teachers well via my friends and yeah. and family that have talked to the teachers because i don't have kids in school but i have heard specifically that they say i mean he's not ready to go to the next grade yep. but we don't want to, you know, put that Hold emotionally him on him. Oh. Like it's more it's more emotionally damaging than it is, you know, um, being two years behind yeah, I and guess. being totally <laughs> out of your depth. Oh, yeah. Can you and imagine I mean, how sad and emotional that would be for a kid? Exactly. Who's, to be failing in front of your students, to not yeah. be able to keep up with your um, classmates. I, I mean, there's so many aspects that they just dismiss because they want those numbers. Yeah. And it's 100%. In the middle of an election, you're going to change these metrics. So you can say, oh, it's not 50%. It's 70% mm-hmm. that are doing well. Well, the rest of the metrics tell a story. I'm so glad you noticed that because I've never put that those two things together. That like the rest of those metrics tell such a startling story Mm -hmm. about the lowering standards about we'll prop up kids for any reason well we know the reason for political reasons Uh, and then by the way numbers a poll and then oppose school choice so that it's so interesting that education has become such a passion topic on the show Mm -hmm. for us and we actually have we'll talk about more but we have a special coming up next week on education because neither of us have kids but we see it how nonsensical it is Mm -hmm. how political they're making it Uh, And also, you know, all of these political and social issues that find their way into education at a time when our core purpose of education is failing. It's just become, I I, I think, and I see parents struggling, um, cut out of their kids' education, upset, with no recourse. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know why we just started covering it more. And then the school choice issue. And then you have someone like Rakedahl or Bob Ferguson who oppose school choice. Right. Yeah. So they want to force parents who don't have the money to keep their kids in a failing public education system yep. because we can't give you a choice because the teacher use union, that would be bad for them. Right. But you know what I found out last night that I did not know or I don't think I knew. Hmm. So Bob Ferguson's railing, he has this ad we talked about yesterday. Right. Where, oh, Dave Reichert thinks teachers are overpaid, which Dave Reichert never said that. Oh, Dave Reichert wants to defund our public education system by letting, you know, who sends their kids to private school? Oh, I'm sure I do know. <laughs> Bob Ferguson. Of course he does. Sends his kids to private mm-hmm. school. You guys, Bob Ferguson <laughs> sends his kids to private school. Sure He's got say. ads mm-hmm. running that cost half a million dollars to air, lying about Dave Reichert saying that public school teachers are overpaid, saying Dave Reichert is going to defund our public education system, talking on the debate stage about how he's against school choice. And he sends Mm-hmm. His freaking kids to private school. You know how many Washington parents could never afford to send their kid to a private school, but who so desperately want to because they know they'll get better educational outcomes? Bob Furs- Ferguson can do it, but at the same time, he's so beholden to the WEA that he's going to force those middle class families, he's going to force those poor families to keep their kids in an educational system that's failing them. And I do think that people say, I. I've been, I was talking this morning with somebody about the school choice thing and how that should be a bigger topic for OSBI, but, yes. but really, but really I'm not sure that it can be because it's got so many, there's got to be so many people in the mix, right? Yeah. So OSBI cannot decide on school choice. So you've no. got to get, it has to be a full turnaround and leadership around here because you've got to get the governor, yeah. you've got to get the turn or all these people, you've got to get legislators, everybody on board with this or it'll never happen. And so I do think it needs to be a bigger discussion. If you would like school choice for your kids and schools to be fixed in this area, then you've got to vote differently everywhere. You yeah. have got to realize what 
what these people are responsible for, all of them, not no. just OSPI in charge of schools. No, it is all of the legislators, all, all of the, you know, everybody we put in charge in Washington is responsible for making that happen. And if we can't change the leadership here, it's going to be a real tough battle. A hundred percent. But I think we need Impossible to normalize battle. talking about it. And yeah. also people will say, well, it'll hurt our public schools if we give school choice or a school no. voucher. It's like, well, it won't if public schools are performing to a point where parents want to keep their kids there. Then that doesn't hurt public schools. But what you're saying is you want to force, we talk about all the time, it's the two door choice. It's like you want to lock one door up and not even give it as an option to parents, even though there's like death and destruction behind the other right. door because you know that the path through the other door is so bad that if given a choice they'll choose door number two so you're like well door number two is not it's not an option, it's not an option. and then mm -hmm. what incentive is there to improve public education when you're forcing people to stay there there's no incentive right so and it's if, really a wild issue i do have some friends that are um homeschooling their kids now and <laughs> in no way are they like really ready to homeschool no i mean they're just ordering books they're ordering all these things because they're so scared of our public edu education system right now that they're like can't do it anymore i'm just gonna homeschool yep. and they're just trying to figure it out so let me tell you I, a lot of people would pick door number two eight like the i think ferguson during the debate said that you know then they we don't those schools aren't held to the yeah. same standards or they aren't forced to be accountable right. or whatever it is, the same standards. I'm like, well, people are choosing like right. zero standards and just like teaching out of a book at home yeah. because they're so over your standards, over your standards, over your standards yes. right? A hundred percent. And the same thing applies though to a charter school or to a private school. If your kid's not getting a quality education, you're not going to want them to go there. Mm -hmm. That's why they're leaving public schools. It's one of the many reasons they're leaving public schools. Maybe they don't want a political or social agenda pushed on their mm -hmm. kids. Maybe their schools aren't safe. We've seen that increasingly so with some right. high schools in Washington. Washington State.